Hello, hello. All right, we are live. Welcome. We're going to do another portfolio review. So we did one, how long ago was it? Like two, three weeks? We did one around then. And I think we were able to fit like five projects in. Yeah, I think it was five. So I at least want to cover four today, but I asked if anyone else wanted their portfolio reviewed or their project. Go ahead and submit it. I got a form. Um, the form should be in a sticky post. I don't know. I'll probably put it in a comment as well. But we're going to go ahead, and I do see some submissions, so I'm going to look through them real quick. Uh, but before I do, I'm going to play a little music today. All right, so I'll be honest. I'm a little bit rushed uh, this today. So give me just a minute. We'll set everything up. All right, but how are people doing today? It's Friday. It is Friday. Um, should we do... Let's see, royalty free. Yeah, I think we'll do this one. All right, let me see how loud it is. Hey, TJ, how you doing? I'm peeking. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, because uh, I finally am going to give myself a break at the end of December. I'm going to go ahead and go through all my settings, fix my audio settings, fix my video. Uh, I'm going to switch some stuff up. But because um, I always feel like I'm just juggling like badly edited themes and alerts. And I never really took the time to set any of that up. I don't even have I don't even have emotes like YouTube emotes. Like if you become a YouTube member, like that's the least you could do for people subscribing to you. And I don't even have emotes people can use. They have little icons next to their names, but not emotes. Um, all right, let's go. There we go. You guys should be able to hear it. Um, let me know if the music's too loud. It's looking like it's pretty good right now, though. Amir, um, off topic, but what are your thoughts on the no-code, low-code movement and how it impacts developers, positive or negative? No-code, low-code, is that basically... Um... Last time I heard about that, isn't that like kind of encouraging solutions to be created through, I don't know, like um, sites like Squarespace? Is it encouraging, um, is it just encouraging like site creators and stuff like that versus hiring engineers to build something out? It's been a while since I've heard that phrase, so I could be way off. Um, it's typically, typically used to create tactical apps to handle simple functions. Low code can be used in those cases as well, but additionally create apps that run processes that are critical to a business, to an organization's core systems, such as certain integrations and digital trans formation initiatives. What? Um, it feels like it's platforms created to like build out features, right? Really simple features, probably that are gonna be shared across different applications. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm just not in the know on this one, but it doesn't feel like it's something that's gaining a lot of traction. I mean, th but that should be a philosophy anyways. It really should. I, I mean, I think even a lot of engineering teams or a lot of businesses that have engineering teams would prefer this versus before they bring in an engineer to do something because engineers are expensive. I don't know, am I way off with the movement? But I, I feel like it's it's something that's kind of always been there. I don't think there's like this giant movement that's like changing things across the landscape. Um, 
That's just my two cents, but I haven't really looked into it much. We are good. Welcome. Oh my God, I'm going to butcher your name. Um, I Fian Yi. I'm sure there's an emphasis on the Yi at the end of your name and that I didn't just butcher it, but welcome. Richard, happy Friday to you. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I Copilot popped up, but I'm like, there's no way a low code is going to be talking about GitHub Copilot. I don't know. I've had mixed reviews about Copilot. I've never used it. I don't want, I don't know. I don't want something to create. So in my opinion, I don't know. When t time is a huge factor, Copilot can, it seems like it can be helpful. But a lot of developers, what they do is they just create reusable code, reusable components that they bring in anyways. So um, I don't know. I've, I've heard mixed feelings and Copilot steering people in a different direction that they didn't want to go. And it sometimes it takes more time to like, fix up the solution that Copilot came up with. Um, yeah, it feels like, it really feels like Copilot might be incredibly useful for algorithms specifically and code, just like trying to optimize code more. But I mean, I'm, I'm speaking, see, I never used Copilot either. I never had a desire to, so. But I don't know, what do you guys think about Copilot? Has anyone used it before? Hey, happy Friday. Are you reviewing a pre-chosen set of portfolios or do you want us to post ours? I am reviewing a preset, uh, but we do these fairly frequently now. So if you want in the pinned comment, it should be above, go ahead and just submit it and we can go ahead and do yours next time. And then I asked for your email address so I can email you if we have done it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and jump into our first portfolio review. Um, doo -doo -doo, where is it? Which one? I think I want to do this one. Oh, it's on GitHub. Uh, all right, URL. Scan the link. I just do a quick virus scan on the link. All right. All right, let's bring over our first one. Everything looks good to me. There's a recent podcast episode of Syntax on Copilot of Syntax on Copilot, recent podcast. Who's podcast? Do you think lack of creativity affect a person from getting hired? People think, yes, potentially, but creativity is a learned skill. There's a huge misconception that creativity is uh, native which is a weird thing to say about people. Uh, but it's like, it's not built into us. It's a learned skill. A lot of people that are very creative, they had a personality that they were very curious about. And they had a personality that got them to explore certain things that boosted that skill up in their life. So creativity is a learned skill. And yes, I, like creativity and what, right? Like you can even argue that um, creativity and just being able to problem solve and think outside the box with an engineering solution, um, you know, that could be considered creative. So it depends. Like, usually when people think creativity, they're thinking like design and UX and coming up with ideas. And, so, and like, all of that is all a learned skill. Um, but yeah, creativity is a learned skill. So, but yes, if you truly don't have creativity, which I would argue you have some, um, it's something you want to boost a bit is is the podcast what are you talking about syntax on oh syntax oh syntax on copilot is the actual podcast name i don't know what you're talking about tj what's the actual podcast name i feel like i, I don't know if you're saying there's a recent podcast episode of the syntax on copilot or like syntax of Copilot is the name. 
Yeah, no worries, Tramel. All right, you guys ready to dig in? Let's do this. All right, so. Uh, um, cool. A CS student trying to get into web development. Uh, cool. Let's dive into it. So, um, Handika Harin. I, why do I even try to pronounce names? I'm so bad at it. I am so bad at pronouncing names. All right. Hi, I am Handika Harin. Oh my God. Hariento U. Wong? Is that how you say it? Okay, uh, computer science student at Asia Pacific University Tech U. See, the thing is, um, Asia Tech University, I'm assuming that's in Asia, right? Sometimes you have universities in the United States, uh, National University of not Singapore. I'm assuming you're in Asia. So the thing is, like I've um, I've mentored a couple of people that were in Japan, and the expectations of software engineers are different, right? They're different across the world, and so there's a lot of commonalities of trying to find a job anywhere in the world, of learning what. Uh, but like even the tech stack that you're trying to learn can differ, um, in what's preferred. Even the type of interview can differ. Like I've. I, I'm a big advocate against a lot of tech interviews and software engineering interviews in India. I think they're really poorly done. And I think the industry over there, um, I, I don't think they treat their software engineers well. And I, I feel like you can get a taste of that if you just listen to someone describe what the interview is like. And it feels like, um, I, I don't need to go into detail, but like there is a big difference between you know, because I, I do mentor some people from India, and there's a big difference between United States and India in the interviews. It's going to be a big difference in different parts of Asia, specifically. So I'm going to give advice based on kind of the United States and what I know, but uh, just keep that in mind. And what you should do is look at the tech stacks, look at what companies are hiring for. Um, I don't know if you can, if there's like a glass door of Asia, if Glassdoor is widely used in different parts of Asia, but like look at people sharing their interview experiences and get a flavor for that and what interviews really care about, which can give you a hint of what hiring managers might even be looking for with your portfolio or your portfolio project. Ooh, with that said, we could still dive into this. Found your channel recently, love the content, appreciate that helmet. Watching you from Barbados. I'm currently teaching myself web development. Your videos keep me going. That's awesome. Where the hell is Barbados? Barbados. Uh, West Indies, Caribbean region of the Americas. Okay. Very cool. Welcome. All right. So, uh, computer science student. Get rid of this. I mean, are you, so a lot of like, don't, don't put your student, uh, don't put your an aspiring software engineer. Don't, don't do that kind of stuff. Don't put that on your portfolio. You are a software engineer. It, like if you're building a portfolio, um, I think it undermines the skill level that you have. Like it's, it's fine to say that you're a computer science. Well, actually, if you're trying to get an internship, that's a very different story. But um, I don't know. The way I look at it is like, <clears throat> I think it's just a misconception of like what a student is. It's, it's one thing to say that you were a computer science student, but <clears throat> I think a lot of students underestimate what they can do. Excuse me, it's something in my throat. Um, so usually like you are a software engineer um, or you are a web developer. So, but that depends. If you're applying for an internship, keep this. If you're going to be uh, applying for positions in the near future, I would get rid of it. Tech used, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Git, SAS, featured products. Okay. Pretty bare bones portfolio, but you're not, you're really not crowding this portfolio. It looks fairly clean. Um, man, that contrast is really poor. It's not really poor. It's kind of poor. I'd brighten this up a bit. 
I would. Um, dashboard like layout that provides information. It's a short blurb though. It's not a huge thing. So you have your GitHub link. GitHub goes to an external link. Good. And then your app goes to an external link. That's good. Minimum you want to have GitHub link and external link. And um, you have your context. It's a pretty clean portfolio resume. Uh, what? Get rid of that. What do you have a, okay, anything like coming soon, stuff like that, that should be in your dev build. That should be on the side, something that you don't push to production, that you don't upload to GitHub if GitHub is hosting it. Um, and you can do that through a separate branch. But yeah, I would, if this is just a coming soon, it just feels broken. Get rid of that until you actually get that up. Um, show more. Uh, find me at my skills. GitHub stats, total commits, okay. Um, I don't know if you want to, um, I would specify that you're sending the user to GitHub here. You're not really showing more projects, it's linking to GitHub. Like if you were linking to a specific, I mean, you have your pin projects, but this is such a small portion of your portfolio. I don't know. I don't know if I like to show more, but um, it's, you know what I need? I need to put in an extra input that asks like what their, what the goal of this project is, right? Because if it's to get, <clears throat> if it's like employers are going to see your portfolio link and they're going to go to your portfolio from a cold application. It's a little bit different than if this was a little bit more searchable. This feels like a uh, just a portfolio that you include on a link on your resume, which I guess it, it solves the problem. Uh, or I mean like you are achieving your goal of just listing your projects and you kind of have a contact. Um, I wonder if I would even put that contact below this as well. They seen your projects and now to reach out to you. But overall, this like this feels like a cold application portfolio, which is completely fine. You kept it simple. It looks pretty clean. Um, I feel like I would utilize white a little bit more. Green, it would be more of a call to action color and you're highlighting it everywhere. Um, I would utilize white a little bit more. Let's go ahead and check out mobile. That's a long animation, shorten that. Man, there's a lot of space here. Does there need to be? Um, tech used. If you're gonna do this, rather than have the user scroll all the way down, sometimes people will put like a little down arrow into like uh, skills or something like that. Uh, feature projects. Yeah, the animations feel a little bit quicker here, don't they? Than your initial tech used. How slow is this animation? Yeah, this is a really slow animation. Match it up with the speed of these. Navigation, home, skills, projects, resume, and then, yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't even include resume in the navigation. I really wouldn't. So the fact that you even have this resume means that you're expecting an audience that potentially hasn't seen your resume yet. When I have a feeling this is just a portfolio where, you know, if they want to view your portfolio, they come from the resume. But if you're going to have a resume link here that tells me you have an audience that might not have seen your resume yet, which might not have had your contact information yet. So maybe consider like a call to action. I like this uh, person's projects. I want to go ahead and reach out to this person and then you have that call to action instead of the even the show more you have this call to action below the the portfolio so you have to, you have to really consider what your goals are uh but other than that i mean it's a pretty clean layout i like it let's uh go ahead and look at performance
Actually, hard refresh clears it. I don't have to manually do that. Okay. Uh, preview of COVID tracker. What? That feels like a... That's ah, a very vibrant image. I would... What was it? Um, yeah, 662. I would run it through tiny... PNG and see if you can optimize it. If you haven't done that already, if you haven't optimized that image yet, this feels like kind of a big image to load, and it's pretty small. Uh, oh my god, it's this big? Why? Um, okay. Huh. Gotcha for increased size of the screen. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Here. Wait, what? What am I doing? Uh, responsive. Uh, let's go... I don't know, 2,000. Okay, so it expands quite a bit. You can see you're starting to have issues with... Um, when you had... Well, I don't know. Yes, yeah, feels weird, doesn't it? When you start enlarging the device. I would say more like... Um, 1400 expect some a little bit more like that but yeah i don't know so it's not that bad your images aren't that bad for being that large and you probably did optimize them but i would uh consider so another thing you can do this is almost just a step up and not necessary but you can basically load specific images of different resolutions based on the browser size um, which can help with optimization. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This seems pretty uh, seems pretty good. It seems clean. Contrast is a little poor. I'd utilize white a little bit more. I think you're overusing the call to action. But placement, um, placement spacing is pretty good. Uh, I don't think you've quite decided who you're typical user is that's going to visit this website when you have something like resume uh, here, but no specific call to action, no primary call to action to contact you. Um, and I would, now you're just at a point, like the really cool projects, now you're just at a point, continue building projects. They look like clean projects, they do. I feel like now you're just going to continue building out your portfolio with more projects, but I feel like you're definitely on the right path with this, so... Anyone, anyone else have opinions about it? It's a pretty simple portfolio. I like simple portfolios. I think portfolios should be simple for aspiring developers. I think the projects are what should be more complicated. Um, but yeah, it feels like a pretty clean design and clean layout. I like it. All right, what else? All right, we have another one. Let me go ahead and run it through virus scanner and all that. And then we'll go ahead and load it up. Man, I'm tired today. I am tired today. I feel like I've been having trouble sleeping. I think I just need like a, a little bit of break. I just took a break during Thanksgiving though. Maybe I need to move more, work out more. I feel like I've just been working on my business the whole time. Um, all right, I think we're good. So another aspiring developer. Let's load it up.
uh, Thomas, I'm, I'm just done trying to pronounce names. We're going to call you Thomas. Front end web developer from Baltimore. Is that Minnesota? Oh my God, I feel so dumb. Abbreviation for Minnesota. It's not Minnesota. It's not Minnesota. Hold on. Maryland. I am so dumb. Oh my God. All right. So from Baltimore, Maryland. All right. So home, your projects. It doesn't look like you can scroll at all. Um, don't change layouts like this. It's jarring. It's way too jarring. And it feels inconsistent. Like I'm on an entirely different website. Um, keep it consistent. Contact me is a mail to link, GitHub, okay. It loads it through an external link. LinkedIn loads it through an external link, good. Uh, Thomas, okay, really simple, right to the projects. I mean, that's the meat of things. Uh, tone token, you have GitHub repo live details. What are details? Interesting, okay. Um, Seems like you've been working on some projects. Memory card game, weather app. Back to projects. I mean, you have breadcrumbs, kinda. Um, but you basically have a backlink, which is ideal. You have the languages, main objective. Oh, I like that. Fetch and use an API, Captain API construct and constructor code out of DOM manipulation, vice versa in an MPC fashion. Made use of Webpack with standard entry output and loaders in a config, type in city of choice. Click submit. I actually like that. You're telling people how to use your apps and you're basically outlining the features based on that, right? That's pretty good. I do like that. Um, I also need to ask people if they're applying to like a front end, back end, or full stack position too, because that's relevant. It feels like a lot of your attention has gone towards, um, that's you. It's re react router dumb. Gotcha. Well, what are, what are you aiming for since you're here, TJ? Are you aiming for a front end position, back end, full stack? It's very, it, it feels like there's definitely some work to be used with CSS specifically. Um, and just like, you know, UX in general. But, um, this feels like it's a kind of a logic heavy portfolio, right? So this might catch the attention of someone that might hire for a position that doesn't utilize a CSS, but utilizes more JavaScript. Front end. Gotcha. Yeah. So more work on CSS specifically, um, UX and CSS, I think will go a long way. Looking for first job, unemployed, okay. I don't know. Let me, I um, just wanna check out a couple things. It's responsive. What? Technically, like, why is this, um, why do you have multiple headers? Maybe I'm just like super rusty, but headers should be utilized once. I, I, or maybe, no, I feel like I'm wrong with that. I feel like you want to use H1, H2, H3, stuff like that. Yeah, you can use multiple. Okay, yeah, I'm completely wrong about that. Never mind, ignore me. Um, I'm probably improperly using header, but with your header text, 
You use them in H2. I don't know. I think it's semantically correct. Never mind. Ignore me. I feel like margin zero. Let me just look at your CSS a little bit. Article. Why are these articles up here? Oh, gotcha. They're all in article tags. Div. Nav. You are using Flexbox, but for this, okay, you're using Flexbox throughout the entire thing. I feel like your issue isn't necessarily with CSS. I think it's UX. I think it's just improving the design, getting feedback on it. Um, I don't know. I'm not really diving deep into your CSS code, but I feel like uh, just contrast in general, um, I wonder, just alignment as well. It it feels like it feels like you would want to probably align the logos versus the text here and you could see i don't know so i'm seeing inconsistent spacing i think across like between these two but it feels like there might be that might just be like a background spacing within the image itself but aligning the logos to the top I think would go a long way. Um, I wouldn't care about like trying to center align the text itself. I don't know. I, I guess I would want to see how that looks. But this this gray background, I feel like I'm just starting to get into preference, but it feels like maybe it's just this gray. I don't know. Okay. Let me, let me consolidate my thoughts. Let me start from the beginning because this is kind of a, a UX concern that I'm talking about. Why, why do you have a transition here? If nothing's gonna happen, if no action can happen, it's not clickable, get rid of the transition. It's misleading. Um, it almost feels like a button. You're making it feel like a button. And I think you're illustrating to employers that you don't really understand the conventions of a button and what that should feel like. You don't understand the convention of like a card and what that should feel like. There should be some significance if you're gonna include the animation and I don't think there is here. So you have, um, these are external links, right? Get over, yeah. So you have external links, you have a live preview, then you have the details, all pretty relevant. You have a screenshot. Um, I mean, it's a pretty simple portfolio, but I, I feel like this gray is just, um, I, you know what, what I would consider is having a different color within these cards. I wonder if that would do it for me. Maybe it's like a lighter gray background and a darker gray with these cards. Um, I don't know if black on this dark gray is very readable. Um, What's the font size of this? Hey, Jeremy, welcome. How you doing? Uh, do, 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 do. Twenty-four. These links are really big. It just feels like it's taken up too much space. It feels, it's. I guess it's very readable. But um, I would wonder if making these logos a little bit more prominent. I don't know if that live preview. What would you use for an icon for the live preview and details? I wonder if the I or the details if that even matches up. Maybe it would be like a line, 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 like you're um, hinting that you're going to be reading paragraphs or more text. Um, I don't know. I I would improve the contrast. I can't decide what I want to do with this, but I would improve. I take away the transitions and improve the contrast with the icons themselves. I think white on this gray is completely fine, but I would experiment because it, it all kind of 
feels like it blends in together rather than these components being these separate entities uh, from the background. So I would experiment with different background colors of the cards itself, whether you lighten this and darken this, or keep this this dark, or lighten this and darken this. I would experiment with that, but um, the contrast of the logos themselves could be improved, but you're not going to change that until you experiment with the background color of the card. Uh, what do you guys think? I feel like I feel like there are some improvements to be made with this, but I don't exactly know. I don't like. I can't picture the colors that I want these things to turn into. I don't necessarily know the the font size that I want these to shrink to, um, or if they even should shrink at all. There's nothing wrong with it. It it always looks worse when links are underlined, but they should semantic or they should through accessibility be underlined um, if they're going to link to something else potentially. Or you could indicate that they're a button, right? You could turn this, and this is where you could utilize animations when you mouse over and indicate that they're a button. Then you can sometimes get away with removing the underlines. I'm sure some people would disagree. But yeah, what do you guys think? It's using React reusable components. I created a JSON file that I type in my text, and it brings it in. Header is a container. Makes sense. The top of the SVG logos. Okay. I didn't know you review people's portfolios from the live. Will you be doing another live soon or a video? I will be doing another live portfolio review. So look at the pinned comment and go ahead and click on that form and fill it out. That's where I get my uh, submissions from. But yeah, I just started doing these. Agree the border feels like it's not serving a real purpose, but I'm terrible at UX, UI. Yeah, that's the thing. I remember... Um, I remember getting really good feedback from someone that's a front end developer. And I'm like, I, I told him, I'm like, you have really good feedback. You have a really good design sense. He's like, no, I don't. I'm just a user. And, you know, we had a conversation about it, but like he really emphasized, he's like, I'm just a user that kind of has certain preferences. Right. And that's literally all I lean on. And it was a really interesting idea of like, cause I feel like I'm bad with UX and design in general. And, I think like this is where um, I think a lot of people have really good insight. Like they instinctively know they be like we've all as web developers, we probably all use thousands of websites. And I feel like we have a pretty good instinct of what looks good and what feels good and what doesn't. And sometimes we can't describe that clearly, but I feel like, I feel like people aren't as bad at UX as they think they are. You know, I, I feel like we all have kind of that gut feeling. That's kind of what changed my perspective. Though. That's kind of what changed even my confidence level when doing these types of reviews. I think that's good feedback, though. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear you're doing good. It's a balmy 70 degrees here in New Connecticut right now. That, I'm jealous. It's like less than 50 here. It's not 30. It's not as cold as it has been, but... Is the whole usage of React Router not good then also? Um, what do you mean? Is the whole usage. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Uh, Let's check out mobile. What? Well, that's an error. That's a bug. So they can't refresh on a link like this? You might want to fix that. So to answer how you set up React Routing, no, I don't think it's working 100% yet. Why do you have this white space here? Not a fan of the color just because it doesn't seem so clean looking. It really doesn't. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, I am I think I've been avoiding saying what I want because it feels like it's preference, but it feels instinctual to say, like just the, the feel of this website feels very clunky. I don't even know what to focus on. Um, and it, it, I think it's a contrast issue specifically and spacing issue. Like you could even potentially like put a little, I don't know, what a little white border. I would almost argue, do you want these cards extending? Um, do you want to get rid of the borders and you just do a top border? Do you space these projects? When you have these cards with no spacing, I wonder how they would, hmm, I don't know. 
What you can do is do alternative colors with the projects potentially going forward. The borders aren't the worst thing, but um, it just feels like it's everything's just so compressed together. It feel, and then you get like content over spill of like you can't really tell which content is part of the container. Um, yeah. 100% users are good at feeling what works, but sometimes terrible at giving information on how you would go about fixing that. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Positive feedback. I like the minimal aesthetic on this one. I tend to like minimalist designs. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Uh, the one, I almost feel like this doesn't need to be two pages. You know what I mean? Um, like going to home. I don't know. I, I wish I could scroll. I don't think this needs to be two pages necessarily. But it's not the worst thing in the world because you're going to have your extra details here. And I actually like what you put for the details here. Um, let me just check out optimization. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's go ahead and do a hard refresh. Oh, I can't even optimize for that portfolio. Okay. Um... The portfolio separated into links. Correct. But when you refresh, that's how React Writer works. Front end single page applications into links when you refresh it navs to the So no. You can fix this. You can definitely fix this. Um this this is a bug. This isn't how React Writer works. And so whether you're doing that um so what you can do is any other links that come in, um, you, you could put the weight on React Router handling this or your backend handling this. But with React Router specifically, um, you can make it. So when you do load the project links, there's not a 404 error like this. Like this is 100% a bug and this is something that needs to be fixed. This is not natural for React Router. I just want to like really emphasize that because don't just leave it like it is. This is broken. Um, so experiment with it and figure out what you can uh, fix with it. But uh, I, I just want to go to like the main page. Hold on. Um, and let's go ahead and do a hard refresh here. Uh, size. Okay, so it's clear that I don't care about this page really. Uh, projects, size. Okay, images are pretty damn small. Um, of course. Is this uh, styled components or? Oh. CSS. Oh, you have a font main chunk. No, gotcha. It's initially loaded. Okay. Plot quote. Details, image container. Okay. I'm assuming this is, uh, I mean, it's not necessarily consolidated, but. cache it's a really small css file okay i mean it feels pretty optimized nothing like uh, alarming with any unsteady connections or anything like that but yeah react writer was a bug i feel like so the main thing is uh, i i don't think you're really going to be considered for a heavy css position um that might lean into like being a little bit ux savvy right now i feel like looking up how to do different contrast and how to separate content and how to like, what are good conventions of creating cards and components on the page that um, that are clearly distinguished between different pieces of content. Um, you, you kind of like, you have a hierarchy. It looked like you had a pretty semantic HTML. So this feels like a, a UX thing that you could start diving into and just even looking up different designs and how other websites do it. Don't copy, but get different ideas. And I think if you 
uh, revamped his portfolio, I think it would focus more on um, the UX. But I feel like your projects are probably going to be your strong suit, right? It feels like, especially if you're comfortable with React and you're comfortable with React Router, it, you're probably utilizing JavaScript uh, pretty heavily. And I feel like where you're going to shine is with these projects. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. That's my feedback. Hopefully that was helpful. You're welcome, TJ. You are definitely welcome. Kind of something along the lines of material design. Does it? Interesting. All right, let's move on to the next one. So let's uh, switch it up and we're gonna do a... Um, here, I gotta make sure that I mark these off. I'm trying to get position. Yeah, I feel like I feel like JavaScript is probably going to be your strength, TJ. Just with what you're focusing on, it shows what you're interested in. I feel like it is going to be your strength. I'm curious how uh, what kind of backend setup you have. Uh, currently work. Okay, so I kind of want to, so this is someone, um, this is someone that I think just wants to improve their web development skills. Um, I think they're caught in a position that might not be challenging them or like giving them the requirements that uh, is really going to challenge them much. So we're actually going to do one more portfolio and then we'll try to pick out a portfolio project because I wouldn't do at least one of those. So let's go ahead and load this. Um, do a quick virus scan. It's on GitHub pages, gotcha. So React Router is buggy on GitHub pages. Um, There's a reason why people usually don't utilize React with GitHub pages. Um, I don't know. So it's been a while, but I feel like... So React Router specifically... Um, I wonder if it was the issue of direct links to your sublinks that would cause React to give those kind of errors. And I'm not 100% sure if you can fix that with GitHub pages. I don't... like. My recommendation to developers, don't put React and React Router on uh, GitHub or Git pages. There are better solutions for it. Like, I mean, just putting it on Heroku, if you, um, oh my God, I'm blinking. What's uh, Netlify? Is that what I'm thinking of? Netlify? Having an optimized React version on Netlify. Um, that's an alternative that you can use. All right, I think we are good. I lost the link though. Elijah, there you are. All right. Um, okay, this one actually looks kind of cool. Interesting. All right, let's load it up. Elijah J. Wilcott, full stack developer. Actually, what was the uh, transition? Okay. I like this. I, I mean, like, kind of a smiling face, but, like, I like that you put your image here. This looks pretty dope. It looks clean. Uh, portfolio, so home, progress bar, and then you have your portfolio projects. Skip a few, track your progress. So you're naming the features. Kind of like that. Uh, view project. Okay, so then it goes into the details. Then you have, excuse me, your live site and GitHub code. Um, oh, you didn't center this, you left aligned it, that's good. And then you have a video illustrating it. I would start with the video. I don't know, what do you think? Maybe not? Because this is a pretty colorful picture, and it definitely, like, it paints a picture of what you've built. 
Uh, progress bar. Just got the greatest. What, what is this? What is this progress bar? I'm a huge fan. So you see this with blogs. You see this with a lot of content pages. And I'm going to do it with my website as well. But starting with the video is very powerful. It's very powerful. Like giving context of like what, what it is. Even I, I feel like sometimes the video will speak for itself. Um, you already have this context. I wonder if a video replacing this would be better. Because I wonder if the image itself is needed. This is like, this is a legitimate A-B test scenario where you can put the video, like just get rid of this, put the video here for some users. And then for others, you just have the screenshot with the video down here. And that's a legitimate A-B test that you could do to see how long users actually stay on this page or do they watch the video? Like that's, um, that'd be a pretty cool test to do. Complete intro video. Wait, how many videos do you have? Um, with copyright stuff, I'm not going to play this video. YouTube's, man, it's super strict on that kind of stuff. But uh, I wonder if that's needed. Intro. Why, why isn't this intro video up here? I don't know. What do you think so far? Netlify is supposed to be good. Nice hero image there. I love the hero image. I really do. Yeah, Netlify is a really good solution. It's highly recommended uh, by a lot of people. And anyone that's seen Dan do interviews or be interviewed, um, he highly recommends Netlify. It's something he leans on heavily. Everyone will have a different preference for video or not. They will, but it's good to see what the majority prefers. I do agree. They, they might have a different preference, but I feel like it's a legitimate A-B test to see uh, what keeps people on the page even longer. And I think that would be a good measurement. Because there's a reason why a lot of blogs that have a video to it will have the video at the top and not at the bottom below all the text. It's a very common practice among blogs that also have a video component to it. Um, create and deploy 30 separate to-do apps with one day. Okay. So... We just look at one zombie dash. That sounds cool. Run from zombies, dash fireballs, nuke the undead. That's really cool. Very creative. It's, you seem like you'd be a fun developer to work with. Group project was created with, oh, group project. Okay. Uh, oh, you did it with the uh, Mimpy? Received, or listed individually, received. Uh, was, this a, uh, uh, was this a hackathon project with Mimpy? That's pretty cool. I like that. And yeah, if you guys are looking for a hackathon to participate in, you're an aspiring developer, uh, definitely check out Mimpy. They host it monthly, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's monthly. So everything has like a contact below it, which is kind of cool. I feel like you you have your call to action down. You have your skills, resume, we're not gonna download it. Email, mail to link, social media, I'm assuming, um, okay, external link send message it's pretty cool i like it it's legitimate i would so you know whether you're trying to aim for a new position or get better with your current position i'm assuming you have a portfolio and you're trying to revamp it you might be aiming for a new position um i don't know i don't have a lot of feedback i really don't i feel like i i don't want to be as picky it feels like a lot of information it's a lot of images. Um, I don't really know what to focus on. Contrast is pretty good. Um, with portfolio images, sometimes it's, I don't know. So this is your main project that you want to highlight. I feel like this is well laid out. I really do. I think, is there, are there alignment issues here? I think these don't quite align up. Why not? Feels like there are some alignment issues here with the image. Um, I would almost, if you're gonna do this, you're gonna have less text above, I would at least align the buttons to the bottom or something like that. And I don't feel like they're aligned. It's really hard to tell, but I don't feel like they're aligned. Um, what else? I don't know, it's pretty well laid out website. Let's uh, go ahead and go to mobile. 
I like that you built this to solve a problem for yourself. What do you mean? Was it a specific project we were talking about? Oh, the progress bar. Track your progress. What problem do you mean? Elijah, um, really? Okay, and it switches to the header. That's interesting. Progress bar, view project, good spacing. Uh, man, this font is, it looks blurry, but it, it's just a interesting font. It's a very thin font. I, I don't know if I, I mean, you don't have a long, do you use that kind of font for this? Every decade, the British film. I don't know, line spacing is really good. It's left aligned, it's pretty clean. What is, Ooh. The font size, 14, uh, I don't know. On mobile, I would actually, man, why does my neck hurt? Uh, 14 is so low. I wonder what 16 would look like. I feel like that's more readable. I'd bump it up. That's way better. The font is already tricky. It's like, it's kind of wiggly. It's not, um, it's it's a unique font, but I feel like 14 is too low for this font. I think you need to bump it up to 16 everywhere. Anyways, um, what else? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Looks like you have a bug with the video. So you can set like a minimum width. Sometimes like with with iframes and, and videos and stuff like that, you can set a minimum width of the entire document so that, um, well, body. Never mind. I would, I would shrink this video. Anyways, that's what I'm saying. Ignore what I just said before, but I would shrink that video. Um, you could probably space it out vertically a little bit more here. Text, what does text mean? Call it skills. Text stack. Maybe if you called it text stack, that'd be better. Navigation, pretty clean navigation. Eat home. I, you're really focused on your projects. I feel like this is a, you know your audience. Um, you know what you should be focused on. It looks pretty clean. Last thing is just, uh, let's check out the network tab. Okay, so the BFI 250 progress bar. Eat at home, produce. Uh, that's this one, right? Eat at home. BF oh no, that's this one. Discover the greatest films of all time. Skip a few, track your progress. I wonder if he uses it. I really do. Let's go ahead and do a hard refresh. Stomach's growling, I need more water. What are your images? Wait, where's that picture? Have you run this through an optimizer? Um, I don't know, 488 for that size. It's a pretty small size. I mean, it's very vibrant. If you've ran it through tiny PNG or something like that, um, that's completely fine, but I would see if you can't optimize that more or something that size. It's not a huge deal. And then I want to actually load just a home page. Yeah, 
empty cache. That's not that much. Uh, I don't know. Run it through an optimizer if you haven't already. Otherwise, it's not that bad. Uh, pretty small CSS files. Oh, jQuery is so heavy for what it does. The few functions it uses, but 30 isn't, I don't know. You're using a minified version of jQuery, but um, yeah. So here's what I would do. Here's my recommendation. Um, Cause I know you mentioned like you're kind of um, focused on WordPress a little bit, right? Yeah, and you want to get more out of WordPress development, so get more comfortable with vanilla JavaScript. Um, yeah, get more comfortable with vanilla JavaScript. Don't like just jump into React right away or anything like that. But jQuery, um, I love what you did with jQuery. Now try to do it with vanilla JS and your next project. Um, but I think like your next steps really are getting more comfortable with JavaScript and seeing what that entails, seeing what kind of projects you want to build with it, but. Um, you can start with just DOM manipulation in general with vanilla JavaScript, um, but I would I would explore more of the programming side of it. Um, you know, look up Eloquent JavaScript, look up you don't know JS. I feel like you're at a point to like really dive deep into your JavaScript skills, and I think that'll go a long way. Otherwise, like really clean layout. I love what you're doing here. Um, you know UX, you know your call to actions, you know contrast, you know. Um, I mean, uh, everything seems to be pretty optimized. So I feel like, you know, you, if you've been working on landing pages, it shows. And um, yeah, that's what I had to say about it. Any other thoughts? Re read second paragraph of his description on BFI. He talks about his problem that, oh, gotcha. Sometimes I tend to, okay, anyway. Was conceived from my own struggle to keep track of such a massive list. You're right. I do love that. I absolutely love that. Very cool. I love seeing projects people build to solve their own problems. Um, all right. So what I am going to do, I'm going to grab some more water. Give me just one second, and then I will be right back. Um, okay. I don't think this is uh, loading. What is this button? What's this button do? Oh, that's my Twitch one. All right, that's our BRB screen. Be right back. All right, I am back. <sighs> that tastes good. All right. Um, let's load. Uh, where is it? I have web development as part of my job. Okay, so. This was submitted. Hmm. Which one do we want to do? Let me load a few websites. Hold on. We'll do one more.
Okay, this is a current developer. Um, I can already tell you I'm gonna be more strict on this kind of website. I'm looking forward to it as well, so thank you for submitting it. All right, here we go. Resold.us. Roughly how many portfolio projects do you get submitted for these streams? Um, not a lot. Um, I still have, like including this one, four to do. Um, which I'm not gonna, this is gonna be the last one most likely. So yeah, not a lot, maybe Maybe like four projects that are submitted after each stream. Um, I don't, I don't really advertise it all that much. I probably could advertise it more if I wanted to fill this up, but um, yeah. All right, let's dive into it. Resold. Why .us? Why do you choose that extension? Do you? Um, Do you have sites in multiple states? I don't know if you sh the extension, I, I don't feel like this is a right extension for this. Why did you choose US? Maybe because that's the only thing, that's the only domain you could get. I don't know. Um, extensions are a thing. Utilizing the right extensions for the right purposes is a thing. Whether that amounts to better SEO or not, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, it sounds like you just want a short domain name. So that could work well for you. It could not. I don't know. Um, Um, all right, cool. So, resold. Wow, very blue. Buy, this is blurry. Why is this blurry? Is this an image? It's an image. Why is this text? Use text. Text is more searchable. Like, this is probably going to be an SEO. Uh, you're probably going to utilize an SEO strategy for something like this, potentially. But, yeah, this should not be an image. Um, I get that you're look. Why do you get out of here? Oh, because I scrolled down a little bit. I gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, so make this text understand semantic HTML. What that means, accessibility is important, not only for, um, obviously, people that could utilize that, but um, but search engines, bots. Um, it's going to make it more search engine friendly. So you really want to avoid big images like this or images in general that represent, you're doing another image. Stop this. This logo, like this logo alone could be an image. Align these. Um, all this text should be aligned. At least the header text should be aligned, and then you might have uh, some paragraphs that extend a little bit further. But uh, this should, a little bit more line spacing here. Man, this is not readable. This white text on this background that's already kind of blurry. The contrast is so poor. Uh, most recent listings. Space this out a little bit. More spacing between, so I can distinguish like what, okay, three simple steps and most recent listings. Those are two different areas of your website. More bottom spacing here. Uh, because you actually have more spacing between these images than you have here. I mean, just with, um, what's the gestalt principle? Um, proximity, right? That's what I'm thinking. Like proximity tells me that this header is part of this section for some reason because there's so much spacing here. Um, and if you're going to have images that have dynamic heights and that might not match up with other images, then, um, you definitely want to be generous with the spacing between this and the other section to distinguish like, yeah, that even these images that are super far away from the header are part of this category, this section of the website. 
Um, jewelry, art, clothing, sporting goods. Um, let's scroll. Why do you have a button here? So this indicates that it's gonna be a dropdown, usually, right? The convention is that you mouse over it or you click it, a dropdown should occur, but that's not what happens. Get rid of, the, I don't know if this icon is helping you at all. Um, you can choose a different icon for it if you want an icon, but yeah. Hi, could you please share us some template portfolio? I want to learn from that site. Can I please share it? You can just go to resold.us. Hey, Luke. Welcome back. How you doing? Yeah, it's just resold.us. That's jarring. What just happened there? Um, why is this moving? There should be a consistent alignment here. We can't find products matching all of electronics, okay. Click here to begin selling. Um, do you really need to search if there are, are no products? Like logically, I wonder, oh wait, what did I click? Why am I getting products now? Oh, digital cameras. Um, oh, search digital. So mm, I, I wonder if it'd be misleading, but you almost, do you just want to search electronics in general? Like you provide more of a general search when we were like, okay, search criteria is too specific. Let's go ahead and search more generally. I would think about the UX with that because right now this feels like, why would I want to search digital cameras? What's that going to accomplish if no digital cameras exist? And it, you can see, like I would bump this down when you have empty content, make sure this is at the very bottom. Um, but right now I would... I would think about what you want to do here. Do you want to provide a more general search? Do you just want to take them back? Do you want them to begin selling? Um, you probably want to provide an option, but what about users that are probably here to search for a product? Like you're really telling them, well, maybe a search will do something here, right? Um, but it doesn't. Uh, camcorders, okay. Lenses, uh, tripods. Why do you have all these categories? If they don't, just have an electronics category. I feel like a lot of empty categories just makes it seem like your site isn't being used, right? Can you trust a site that doesn't have a lot of entries on it that's not really used? Probably not. That's the, that's probably what I would think of this website. I've been scammed before. I tried to buy a Nintendo Switch um uh, the fit thing that you like um it's like an adventure and it makes fitness fun and it's actually a really cool game but i got scammed out of oh but they charged me a hundred dollars or something like that because it's an expensive game i think it was a while back but i was fighting through paypal and everything and it was a horrible experience anyone that's gotten scammed it's an annoying experience you're you usually can get your money back if you pro like you have to contact the post office and you have to contact all these other people and try to like provide the proof depending on who your um uh, your payment processor is but um it's a bad experience and people are super skeptical of scams and one thing that can indicate that this website is a scam is it just being empty all these categories are empty I think it's going to hurt you in the long run. I think until you get more products, you don't want all of these subcategories that are relevant. Now, if you say sell, you want people to be able to have these categories as an option. But to the user side of things, people that are buying it, you don't necessarily want um, you don't necessarily want them to see all these empty categories. If that makes sense. Why is the color different in subsections of the first page? Yeah, it, sometimes landing page will, pages will do that, and it can be jarring. It's it's very different. It's not just a little different, and that can be jarring. Well, the thing is, oh, wait, you actually have all the sublinks here. You basically have two versions of your website. So if you click on a subcategory, what happens if you do, like, electronics, um, camcorders? Um, 
I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I would, that's an A-B test to measure. That's honestly an A-B test because that is jarring. And sometimes like your landing pages will, it'll be different colors because you don't have tons of text that you really truly need to be readable. Like it's just headers and call to actions and stuff like that where like you get into fashion, now you get descriptive text um, on this item, right? details maybe it's tons of details here uh where you want it a little bit more readable so it is a it is kind of a common practice but um i would do an a b test on whether that's jarring and causing people to leave or not i know the alignment alone could cause people what what is that like weird you have like a css style sheet that gets replaced or something like that i don't know what's happening there that's weird um it almost feels like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. But um, yeah, you have some jarring things about this website. What else? Log in, sign up. Um, do I want to sign up? Log in, sign up. I'm not signing up with Facebook or Google. I don't even trust this website. Um, create an account. Why? Oh, sign in. Okay, yeah, or create an account. Do we create an account? Terms of service, okay, it's, I do like opening the tab of terms of service in a new tab uh, because you don't necessarily wanna take people out of the flow. Privacy policy, blah, 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 blah. For what it's worth, the white looks better. I think the white looks better too, Jeremy. I agree with you with that. All right. Um, do we sign up? I think we sign up. I don't know if it's going to pre-populate. So... I swear, if you spam me... Greater than eight. Uh... Okay, I'm just gonna do a random password that I have to generate. I like that you do have password strength, but don't steal my password. If it gets linked, don't steal. Uh, oh, hello. Yo. What the hell is this? Look at where the error is. What is this? Can people even sign up for your site? Well, I guess we don't get to test it. That's a bummer. What language has resold been written in JavaScript? I don't know what the back end is. I don't. Whatever causes a blink is forcing a full page redraw and it's expensive. Yeah, it feels like it would be. Let's check out the network tab. All right, so I was gonna sign up, but we can't necessarily do it. Um, sell, I'm trusting that's not that's not gonna work. So you have some, you have a bug to fix. I don't know what that is, but that's okay. Let's check out mobile. Let's check out mobile, then the network tab. I am very curious. Oh, oh, you gotta be kidding me. My camera is blocking it, you're right. I didn't even think of that. Uh, you see this? It still exists, by the way. That's where the air is. Domain for site key. Maybe a capture thing, I don't know. I don't feel like this site's usable. You like this music, the synthwave? Nice, welcome Ryan, how you doing? Um, all right, so check out mobile and then, no, chill. Uh, let's go ahead, what? Okay, refresh.
Okay. How do you get to subcategories? Do you have that option on mobile? Um, clear. <clears throat> Doesn't seem like you have subcategories as an option on mobile. I don't know if maybe that's desired. I mean, that should be your desktop version because you don't really have products here. And I think people are going to interpret this as a scam. So uh, I think actually just do this, but on desktop. Um, used a plus sign. Here. Eh, I'm not even going to look what it was on desktop. The music is a nice touch. Okay, you guys like this. This song right here. This song right here is really good. I love this song. Um, all right. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. I don't know what else to look at. Back. Why isn't this a button? You could use a color contrast to make this um, a primary call to action button, and then you could use gray for the back button, maybe. Um, users, search. Okay. I think, so is web, well, oh my God, I can't talk today. With websites like this, I think less is better when you don't have products. This feels like a, a website that's not going to take off um, unless you understand that. And I think it's understanding what users are going to attract and what products they're going to sell. And you could even do creative like landing pages that highlight really desirable products with a certain category, right? You can make that searchable, very searchable. But I feel like you've built all these subcategories and you're trying to accommodate for everything when you should have leaned on something that was very minimal. Because with websites like this, no one wants to take the leap and trust a website that can potentially scam them. A lot of scamming websites don't have a lot of products on it or they have like jarring, I'm telling you, like all the scam websites that I've been to, they have kind of like jarring, they, they really, didn't keep up with their development. They didn't keep up with their design and they have jarring stuff like this, where like some pages, you just have like misalignment. You have people that have don't really, they haven't taken the time to understand semantic HTML and they just like literally, this feels like a website that just tossed out a bunch of images, try to speed through this really quickly. And they're like, well, this is everything that could it could be used for. It doesn't feel like it's a website that's going to progressively understand the user that's currently on it, where their trust level is, or based on like the activity level. It this feels like a scam website. It it truly does. Um, and you usually see this with, uh, you know, images that feel kind of like blurry, like this image right here that feel, or this image right here that like it doesn't. It feels like you just got someone to pay someone to do a bit of work, and then you're probably not gonna hire a developer again to touch this, right? They just build everything you needed, and that was it. That's what this feels like, and that's what you get with a lot of scam websites. This feels like a scam, 100%. So you are going to have to combat that and figure out how to build trust with users. That's where you're at right now. Let's take a look at the network tab. Okay, that takes a long time to load just this page. 4.26 seconds. That's gonna hurt you in the search results. 
That's oh, gonna hurt. They're, you're gonna get a lot of drop off. Uh, let me down content loaded. You, the thing is, like, when you do like a hard refresh and you have a bunch of stuff, and it's like, well, I think it's just the images that are taking a while. You replace those images, and you replace them with semantic HTML. I think you're gonna be looking pretty good. Uh, let me do this. Uh, Oh, whoops, that's JS. Um, I would, if you don't already have it, with websites like this, make sure you have an image optimizer when someone uploads an image. You're able to optimize that automatically. Very common thing. Okay, so you have a pattern. It's not that big. It's pretty good. Um, even for mobile. Mobile, it's not that bad. Utilizing jQuery. It's a big library. Man, that is a big library. Knockout, you have a lot of... Holy crap. It... Do you need all of this for this landing page? This site feels unoptimized. That's a big, that's a pretty big CSS file. At least minify this, condense it all down. That's a big CSS file. I feel like, I wonder how much shared uh, CSS classes uh, or how many CSS classes are actually shared across different components and stuff like that. This is huge. This feels incredibly unoptimized. It feels like a website generator generated this. I just have trouble... I just have trouble... Man, hold on. Filter title, filter, block subtitle, subtitle. I feel like you could really take advantage of consistent, a little bit more consistent patterns. I mean, this is probably why you have two different versions of the website, which is ridiculous in itself, but this feels highly unoptimized. It really does. What, what happens when I go like digital cameras and I do a hard, well, let's, um, doesn't work. Let me just see the load time with this one. I don't know what you're still loading. This is a, uh, man, this is slow. It just feels like, uh, yeah, I, just, I wonder how many shared styles actually exist. This almost feels like a website builder built it. The front end of it. It does. Um, There's probably, you're not even using a minified version of jQuery. Um, it feels like, yeah, I don't know. This feels like a very front end heavy website that doesn't need to be front end heavy, if that makes sense. jQuery is so bulky. It's so bulky. There's a reason why we stripped it at my first company. Like if you're just using a few different commands, you could recreate those with vanilla JavaScript. And I, I would encourage some people to consider that. Um, but I, it, it's just an easy way to throw up a website. But the thing is like, this is gonna hurt you SEO wise. Like you can use jQuery, you can use libraries to make this super convenient to build a website like this, but search engine wise, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. And you wanna be, you want your results of your products to be listed in your in the search results, you do. Um, I don't even know how, like, with Google Buy, I don't know how you can get your products listed there, but I'm assuming um, they're going to care about SEO to, like, highly value the products that you're listing there that are probably being searched from your website specifically, right? Um, yeah, it just feels like an un unoptimized website. So that's my feedback. We went over a lot of feedback like this. Um, I think the main challenge you have here, you have two challenges. You can... Um, 
I don't think you do a good job of building trust with the initial user. People do not want to get scammed. They are incredibly skeptical. And I explained why I was super skeptical and where I was coming from. But, you know, just semantic HTML in general and just like non-jarring elements and action or like non-jarring things that happen when you go to different parts of the website and like empty product, uh, empty products with your subcategories, stuff like that. All of that um, can contribute towards the trust that you're building with a user. But also, I... That, so I think you need to work on building trust with the user, but I also think you need to work on search engine optimization. I don't think this is very searchable. Slow speeds like this, is it's going to hurt. It's really going to hurt you. Um, other than that, you can make this website work. We're not going to go into like, I don't even know like marketing to make like a reselling company like this work. But um, yeah, that's my feedback with the website. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, yeah. What do you guys think of it? The resize on that center buy and sell image is crazy when you change the resolution. On the center buy and sell. What? Hello? I'm glad uh, you actually mentioned something. Um, you, I think you have a certain uh, resolution that you need to sort out doesn't look great. Wow, this looks bad. That image is just extending the website all the way across. That's what happens with images like this. It's, I mean, you can, you can make your images responsive, but I say just get rid of the images altogether. All right, that's it. So we did three portfolios. Um, so I do have more submissions and I think we got a submission during it as well. Um, oh, we got an additional one as well, cool. So we will do more of these. We'll dive into these. I like focusing on portfolios and then maybe we could just toss in like a portfolio project. Kinda yeah, just depends on like what I'm feeling for the day. But um, if you want your portfolio reviewed, uh, I don't even have the link. Come on, Don, be prepared. Shorten. Go ahead and submit it at this link. And then we'll go ahead and review it. So I'm kind of just going one by one. I do tend to prioritize um, aspiring developers projects, but I eventually do want to get to everyone. Uh, but this project, this is from a current software engineer. So we do do software engineer portfolios and projects and stuff like that. I like to throw those in, but uh, I'd rather like prioritize three versus uh, like three aspiring developers and then one actual software engineer. We get a mix of things, you know, but that's the link. If you want your project reviewed, let me know. Uh, but that's it. We'll do more of these uh, next Friday. We're going to do a live Q&A. We're just going to jump into it. So any questions you have, any blockers, stuff like that, it's just... Um, just a long back and forth, an hour and a half of me just rambling on and ranting. Sometimes people get me ranting, but uh, we're going to do a live Q&A. So if you want to ask tons of questions, that's the time to do it. It'll be next Friday, 1.30 p.m. And then um, we might have one to two more live streams during December. I'm going to take a break around December or around Christmas, but um, yeah, we'll do more of these. So if you like this video, Please like it. It really helps in the YouTube algorithm. And, you know, Ryan, I appreciate you, your support every month. I do appreciate that. If you do like what I do and you want to support me, uh, feel free to consider becoming a YouTube member. It's like a coffee, a price of a coffee for a month. It helps me out as I'm trying to like really solidify this as like a full time thing. And uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting very close to getting my business there. It's not quite there. But um, yeah, any support helps, so I do appreciate it. Yeah, this is a current software engineer. That is correct, BC. All right, well, thank you. That's it. Have a good rest of your Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend. Good luck on all of your projects and happy coding. Take care.